Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247. So in today's video, we're going to talk about RBI's master directions that are related to outsourcing of IT services. Right? So ek thoda background samaj lete hai. Any company or any banking organization or any organization cannot perform all of their tasks on their own. At certain point of time, they are going to outsource certain activities of their own. Hai? Now these activities could be, let's say for example, kisi ko website banwani hai. So they outsource that task to somebody else, to somebody who's an expert on that. Right? So kuch aisi activities hoti hai, which you cannot do yourself or you want any third party to do it. Usko hum kehte hai outsourcing. Right? When you are delegating your task to a third party, that is outsourcing. Or when you are retrieving a service from any outsider, it is outsourcing. Right? Similarly, call centers, business processing organizations, BPOs, right? these all perform the function of outsourcing. So when you give one task or one major head of your organization, of your company to any third party who is an expert in that field, usko hum kehte hai, outsourcing. Theek hai? Now, so banks usually they outsource certain activities. For example, sometimes they outsource the activity of retrieving the loan amount, right? So, when loan recollection hoti hai, kabhi -kabhi wo, wo outsource kar hai. ATM khulne ka option outsource kar hai. So, there are certain activities that banks outsource. Now, these guidelines or these directions are related to outsourcing of IT services. IT services are very critical, hoti hai. especially in this age and day because all our data is stored on the internet or on a cloud. Hai? At the same time, anybody who is handling the IT services will be able to have all your data. So data protection is very important, hai, jiski se, now it is very important to regulate the IT sector and also the sector that has access to your data. Right? So this is why outsourcing uh, jo services hai, especially related to IT sector. The RBI is bringing a framework for the same, a guideline or master directions for the same. Under these master directions, RBI has talked about various things at length. So these guidelines or these master directions are like an act, just may obviously sections nahi hai, but each and every process, uh, aspect is there about everything related to kaise kaise aap outsource kar sakte hai, ek bank kaise outsource kar sakta hai. So what are included in these guidelines are who, sabse pehle to, who will it be applicable to, right? Then what is outsourcing? Outsourcing ka kya matlab hai? Outsourcing of IT services ka kya matlab hai? What are the activities that can be outsourced? What are the activities that cannot be outsourced? Ab outsource kis ko kar sakte hai? What are the major organizations to which activities can be outsourced and jin ko hum nahi kar sakte? Then how will the contract be between the regulated entity and also the uh, service provider jis ko hum outsource kar sakte hai? Kaisa contract hoga un dono ki beech? Legal terms kya honge? Agreement kaisa banega, right? Approve kaun karega us agreement ko? Agreement mein kya kya mention hona chahiye. All of these are mentioned in these draft directions. Now, we as students, we are aspiring to be grade B officers. Hamaare liye important hai ki hum is guidelines ko majorly samaj le ki is mein kya kya hai. Now, the reason I am focusing on this is, previously a question haya tha RBI exam mein, wherein RBI asked about outsourcing activities of NBFC. So the question was, then mein se kaun kaun si activities NBFCs outsource nahi kar sakte, right? So outsourcing because now it is becoming very important and especially when directions come, then it is very important for us to understand. Now, I am not expecting all of you out there to read the entire guidelines, which is the entire document. Hai. You do not have to read it, we just have to understand it. right? That is why I am doing the work for you, I have read the guidelines in detail and I am here to explain you the guidelines. Hai? Theoretical guidelines, hai, general guidelines, hai. it works like a law or a contract. Hai? So, there is no practical or not much to Once you read it, you will be able to understand what is happening. And that is it for all of us, uh, for our exam. Okay. Now, in February 2022, in February 2022, the statement of development and regulatory policies aati hai, along with the monetary policy statement. Now, isme RBI mentioned, the RBI mentioned in this statement of development and regulatory policies that they will come out with a broader framework or master directions related to outsourcing of IT services. After which, June May, in the month of June 2022, a draft framework aitha, draft guidelines aithi, and now final guidelines are coming in the month of April. Okay. Now, 
अब ये जो पर्पस है दीज गाइडलाइंस जो डायरेक्शन है वॉट इज द मेन पर्पज द पर्पज इज टू इंश्योर दैट रिस्क इज मिटिगेटेड रिस्क when it comes to outsourcing of it services when you outsource your services to any third party there are a lot of risks involved right especially when there is data involved jab aap apna data share kar rahe ho or when the it companies have access to your personal data us cheez mein risk bahut zyada important hota hai measure karna and mitigate karna right under these the uh, frame under these uh, directions the purpose of rbi is to tell you that res that is regulated entities they will still be responsible for all outsourcing activities and at the same time unki responsibility kam nahi hogi their responsibility towards the consumer their responsibility towards the consumer will remain intact right so the underlying principle of the direction is that to ensure the outsourcing arrangement neither diminishes the re's ability to fulfill its obligations to its customer and nor impede the effective supervision by the rbi ab rbi jo supervise karta hai that will not be diminished after these guidelines the responsibility of providing you know functions or effective functions to the consumers will still uh, be there or rely on the re's regulated entities okay to so, sabse pehle applicability pad lete hain on who will these guidelines be applicable to kis pe applicable hongi now these guidelines will be applicable to all banking companies including new banks and sbi ठीक है न्यू बैंक्स एंड एसबीआई व्हिच मींस ऑल बैंकिंग कंपनीज जिनको हम रेगुलेटेड एंटिटीज भी बोलते हैं ऑन व्हिच दे विल बी एप्लीकेबल राइट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट प्राइमरी कोऑपरेटिव बैंक स्पेशली दोज इन टियर 3 टियर 4 टियर 3 टियर 4 के प्राइमरी कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स विल बी इंक्लूडेड इन दिस एनबीएफसीज इन ऑल ऑफ दीस लेयर टॉप लेयर्स अपर लेयर एंड मिडिल लेयर विल बी इंक्लूडेड इन दीस गाइडलाइंस ठीक है ऑल बैंकिंग कंपनीज कोरिस्पोंडिंग न्यू बैंक्स एसबीआई primary cooperative banks in tier 3 tier 4 nbfcs in top layer upper layer and middle layer as per the scale based regulation jo hum already pad chuke hain remember these kis kis pe applicable hongi apart from that credit information company cics jo credit credit information provide karti hai banks ko cics and other all india financial institutes all india financial institutes like exim bank nabard under the nabard act and nafed national bank for financing infrastructure and development theek hai exim nabard nafed and along with that nhb and sidbi also nhb and sidbi also these are all india financial institutes nhb and sidbi in pe bhi ye guidelines applicable hain remember these kin kin pe ye applicable hain all banks nbfcs primary cooperative banks in tier 3 tier 4 credit information companies and all india financial institutes ओके, नाउ अब डेफिनेशंस पे थोड़ा आ जाते हैं व्हाट इज मटेरियल आई मटेरियल आउटसोर्सिंग ऑफ आईटी सर्विसेज व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट मटेरियल वी टॉक अबाउट एनी एक्टिविटी और एनी इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज मटेरियल और ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंस टू द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नाउ इन दिस केस मटेरियल आउटसोर्सिंग ऑफ आईटी सर्विसेज इट इंक्लूड्स एनी Yes, any material information or any activity, अगर वो disrupt हो जाती है if it is disrupted or compromised, it will impact the functioning of the REs. It will significantly impact the REs business. So if any activity which has the potential की अगर disrupt हो जाए या compromise हो जाए it will impact the entire functioning of REs. ठीक है That will come under material outsourcing of it services outsourcing ka matlab main aapko already bata chuki hu when you get the function from a third party or an outs uh, outsider okay now this might also have a material impact on re's customers so re's ke business pe that is regulated entities ke business pe impact aayega and also its customer right और अगर कोई ऐसा मटेरियल है एना एनी डेटा एनी इंफॉर्मेशन और एनी एक्टिविटी जिसकी वजह से जिसके लॉस होने की वजह से कस्टमर को बहुत ज्यादा लॉस होगा और एनी डिसरप्शन डिसरप्शन ऑफ एनी एक्टिविटी कैन कॉज लॉस टू द कस्टमर दैट इज इंक्लूडेड इन मटेरियल आउटसोर्सिंग ऑफ आईटी सर्विसेज नाउ वॉट आर द एक्टिविटीज दैट कैन बी आउटसोर्स वॉट आर द सर्विसेज दैट कैन बी आउटसोर्स टू अ सर्विस प्रोवाइडर और अ थर्ड पार्टी Now, IT infrastructure management, maintenance, support. अगर कोई ऐसा हार्डवेयर है सॉफ्टवेयर है जो आप प्रोक्योर कर रहे हो एंड एट द सेम टाइम यू आर मेंटेनिंग इट और मैनेजिंग इट अगर मैनेजमेंट मेंटेनिंग का काम इफ यू आर गिविंग टू अ थर्ड पार्टी दैट विल बी इंक्लूडेड इन आउटसोर्सिंग ऑफ आई टी सर्विसेज विच मीन्स दीज आर द सर्विसेज दैट कैन बी आउटसोर्स 
अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट एनी सिक्योरिटी सोल्यूशन या अगर किसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से आप फ्रेमवर्क फर्मवेयर खरीदते हो एंड देन मेंटेनेंस ऑफ दैट सिक्योरिटी सोल्यूशन राइट अलॉट ऑफ टाइम्स यू कीप मेंटेनिंग योर सॉफ्टवेयर एनी कंपनी और एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज टू मेंटेन देयर सॉफ्टवेयर राइट सो फॉर दैट आउटसोर्सिंग इज अलाउड एंड दीज गाइडलाइंस विल बी एप्लीकेबल ऑन दिस फंक्शन ऑल्सो उसके अलावा कोई एप प्रोवाइडर है एप्लीकेशन प्रोवाइडर That can also be outsourced, right? App development or maintenance and testing of applications. Along with that, data center से related कोई services है Data center is a place where all your data can be stored. Data centers, right? Uh, India is already working towards maintaining huge data centers जहां पर आपका बहुत सारा data uh, store हो पाए Data centers, cloud computing services. We all know about cloud computing services. They provide a platform, a cloud platform to store your data. along with that security services and any other it infrastructure or technology which is related to payment system ecosystem theek hai payment system ecosystem uh, payment system operation or payment system ecosystem se koi related it service hai or it infrastructure hai uski management uski maintenance will be included in this right so it infrastructure management security solution and maintenance of that jisme firmware wagera aa jayenge along with that app providing or maintaining of apps services related to data center cloud computing security services and services that are related to payment system ecosystem okay now ab response agar even if a regulated entity has outsourced its functions or its services or its activity right agar koi it services ko wo outsource kar rahe hain that does not mean that the responsibility is also outsourced the ultimate responsibility is with the re so ultimate responsibility is still with the re kyunki aap hi ka data hai aap hi ka function hai jo aap outsource kar rahe ho so the ultimate responsibility of this entire activity still lies with the re so in case any disruption is there in the outsourcing portion or any risk is there the risk will be borne by the re that is regulated entity only at the end impact unke business pe hi padega so the ultimate responsibility is still with the re okay and the board and senior management of re okay ab just company ko ya just service provider ko uh, the company or the service provider who is receiving this outsourcing contact contract that cannot be that shall not be owned and controlled by any director KMP director, KMP key managerial personnel, KMP or approver of the outsourcing arrangement of RE or approver. So, जो third party है that is the service provider. The service provider, if it's not a group company, which means it is a single company. अगर कोई single company को आप outsource कर रहे हैं, so let's suppose cloud service आपने outsource कर दी, cloud maintenance service, then the third party shall not be owned. or controlled by any director kmp or approver of the re or re's relatives okay it should not be owned or controlled by the director kmp or approver of the re regulated entity ka director kmp or approver nahi ho sakta approver of the agreement okay now there should be assessment of need of outsourcing what is the need and what are the risk associated with that what is the need and what are the risk associated with the outsourcing agreement ab while assessing the need of the outsourcing activity or the outsourcing services these are the considerations that are supposed to be kept in mind these are the consideration these are the points that that are supposed to be considered by any re the any regulated entity so determining the need for outsourcing based on critic criticality of the activity to be outsourced this is supposed to be considered while assessing the need for outsourcing kya need hai aapko ki aap outsource kar sakte hain right uh, now while uh, considering or while assessing the need for outsourcing these are supposed to be considered these points the expectation what is your expectation and what is the outcome that you are expecting out of outsourcing right what are the success factors cost benefit analysis of that outsourcing activity these are the considerations that are supposed to be kept in mind what is the model for outsourcing so ye kuch considerations hai that are supposed to be kept in mind while outsourcing or while assessing the need for outsourcing okay now after outsourcing or while outsourcing the regulated entity shall keep in mind or shall adhere 
to all the norms, all the laws, all the statutory rules and regulations, right? So the RE that is regulated entity shall adhere to all the laws and rules and regulations, statutory compliance, guidelines, for example, licensing ke liye agar approval chahiye to, or jo bhi conditions hai approval ke liye, for example, licensing, registration, aisi sab jo bhi documentation hai, legal agreements hai, that should be adhered to. Okay, so the RE shall consider all relevant laws, rules and regulations, conditions for approval, licensing, etc. While performing the due diligence also. Okay, when due diligence, kar rahe hai na, what is due diligence? Due diligence hoti hai when you do not look at just the facts that are presented to you, but you go behind and you know, take care of all the valid, uh, validation of the facts that are presented to you, right? Ab due diligence, for example, if you have a shadi, ke liye aata hai, right? So, you don't just uh, look at the facts that are presented to you by the outsider or by the party. You also go behind those facts and apni research aap khud karte hai to understand whether the facts that are presented to you are true or not. That is due diligence. Theke? Jab aap khud ki research karte hai and due diligence karte hai. Which means you go behind the facts that are just presented to you on the face of it. Right? That is due diligence. So, while due diligence aapko bhoat saare you have to take care of all the rules and regulations that are to be adhered to. Along with that, grievance redressal mechanism. Ye toh bohat basic hai. Uh, a grievance redressal mechanism should be placed and RE shall not, shall have a robust grievance redressal mechanism that shall not be compromised in any manner. Agar aap koi outsourcing kar rahe hai, that does not mean you will compromise on the grievance redressal mechanism. Grievance redressal mechanism is all, is of utmost importance. Right? And the responsibility hai of you know, grievance redressal of the consumer, just the impact pad raha hai. If any impact is there on the consumer because of the outsourcing activity, hai? that grievance redressal mechanism or jo grievance redressal ki responsibility hai, that will still lie on the regulated entity. The responsibility will still lie on the regulated entity. Okay, now, ek broad policy honi chahiye. A board approved policy should be there related to outsourcing policy, IT outsourcing policy, right? So the RE that is intending to outsource its services shall put in place a comprehensive board approved IT outsourcing policy. A board approved policy honi chahiye. Just me kya kya mention hoga? What are the roles and responsibility of the board? The committees, senior manager, kya kya functioning up outsource kar rahe hai? And other functions that are business functions as well as oversight and assurance assurance of the functions in respect to outsourcing. So these are the points that are supposed to be mentioned in the policy and this policy should be a comprehensive policy which should be approved by the board. Now, ab jo board hai jo approval de raha hai, what is the role of the board? Sabse pehle to, sabse pehle to ek broad framework banana to put in place a framework. Now this framework will include all the activities that are, that can be outsourced and at the same time, what is the functioning performed or what is the process? Be, uh, that is performed by the RE while outsourcing, right? So, a broad framework for approval of IT services, right? There should be a broad framework which should be approved by the board of directors. Along with that, policies, approving of policies. This is also the function of board of directors. Approving policies to evaluate the risk and materiality of all existing and prospective IT, uh, IT outsourcing arrangements. Jo bhi arrangements abhi tak huye hai. The existing one and the ones that are prospective jo ki aage ho sakte hai. Jo bhi policies bani gai hai, the board has to approve those policy. Okay. Approving policies to evaluate the risk and materiality of the existing and prospective IT agreements, IT outsourcing agreements. At the same time, make administrative framework banana for senior managers and Yes, for senior managers. So, the board ka kaam hai, that is approval of policies, a broad framework leke aana. And at the same time, jo ki administrative framework hai, which means the roles and regulations that are to be followed by the senior manager or what will be the function of the senior manager in this entire outsourcing process. This is to be approved by the board. Now, ab senior manager ka kya role hai? Sabse pehle to, there are certain risks involved while outsourcing. For example, agar aapne outsource kar diya, but the company or the service provider that you are outsourcing to is not eligible. Okay, they guidelines not follow guidelines. Or there are, uh, you know, legal cases on them. Or they are not in the jurisdiction wherein you can uh, take an agreement with them. Or 
बी इन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद दम सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वो किसी एनिमी कंट्री में ऑपरेट करते हैं एंड एज पर योर लॉज यू कैनॉट डील विद कंपनी दैट इज ऑपरेटिंग इन एन एनिमी कंट्री राइट सो दीज आर सर्टन रूल्स दैट यू हैव टू फॉलो और Uh, regulated entity has to follow while deciding the outsourcing activity now ab kuch risk associated hote hain now these risks have to be monitored and the board that the senior managers have to work towards mitigating these risks so monitoring the risk and mitigating the risk and also managing and reporting of such risks to the board that is the responsibility of the senior manager apart from that jo third party hai us pe ek oversight rakhna uh the service provider there should be an oversight kept by the senior managers on the service provider on on the third party especially when it comes to data confidentiality like i said especially when it comes to regulated entities such as banks there they have a lot of data of consumers or clients that they have so for example if i am taking a loan from a bank there is a lot of my personal data that a bank has or bank has maintained right my credit history or the my resident history or my salary these these are the data that a bank has a regulated entity has now if they are outsourcing any activity and ab wo activity wo outsource karne ki wajah se the third party has access to all the data this can be a potential risk of confidentiality right so confidentiality ki jab baat aati hai and oversight is to be maintained by the senior managers on the third party especially when it comes to data confidentiality okay uh, apart from that grievance redressal ki hum baat kar chuke hain so the responsibility of the senior manager is to oversee the grievance redressal mechanism right ab do cheeze aur hai prior approval or evaluation of the agreement prior evaluation of the agreement and at the same time periodic evaluation of the agreement between the two parties jo existing hai unka periodic evaluation aur agar koi pehle aise agreement hue hain prior approval or evaluation of the agreements now let's come to due diligence due diligence ka matlab main aapko already samjha chuki hu now due diligence mein kya hota hai so सबसे पहले तो वी ऑल नो द मीनिंग ऑफ ड्यू डिलीजेंस दैट इज क्लियर टू अस नाउ अप्रोप्रिएट ड्यू डिलीजेंस शैल बी परफॉर्म टू असेस द केपेबिलिटी ऑफ द सर्विस प्रोवाइडर आर दे इवन केपेबल टू बी यू नो योर आउटसाइड योर आउटसोर्स पार्टी और लेट्स से योर थर्ड पार्टी और सर्विस प्रोवाइडर आर दे इवन केपेबल ऑफ दैट आर दे इवन एलिजिबल फॉर दैट तो ये सब ड्यू डिलीजेंस करना है सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल समटाइम इफ यू आउटसोर्स टू अ पार्टी हु इज ऑल्सो बींग आउटसोर्स बाय एनी कॉम्पिटेटर ऑफ योर्स राइट सो कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी डेटा कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी का बहुत बड़ा फैक्टर आ जाता है राइट सो इफ टू कॉम्पिटेटर्स आर आउटसोर्सिंग द सेम पार्टी This is the kind of due diligence that you do or a regulated entity does. Due diligence of the third party to which you are contracting to. Okay. So due diligence करना सबसे ज्यादा important है इसमें एक risk based approach should be followed by the regulated entity, wherein you map all the risks that are associated with the outsourcing activity. Okay. अब ड्यू डिलीजेंस करते वक्त वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स दैट द रेगुलेटेड एंटिटी हैज टू टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन दीज आर पॉलिटेटिव फाइनेंशियल लीगल like i said for example if this company is providing service to any enemy country okay to aise kuch legal aspects bhi ho sakte hain financial aspects bhi ho sakte hain what if they are not competent enough or what if their balance sheet is not up to the mark or what if they are involved in any fraudulent activities so kuch financial aspects hain kuch risks associated hote hain so due diligence mein ye sab points aate hain now what are the aspects that are supposed to be considered while due diligence ये तो बहुत बेसिक है इसमें कुछ समझाने वाला नहीं है जब भी कोई कंपनी अगर ड्यू डिलीजेंस कर रही है इफ यू आर आल्सो कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग विद एनी थर्ड पार्टी यू विल डू अ ड्यू डिलीजेंस अब ड्यू डिलीजेंस में कौन कौन से एस्पेक्ट्स होते हैं विच आर सपोज टू बी कंसिडर्ड पास्ट एक्सपीरियंस एंड कॉम्पिटेंस आर दे इवन कॉम्पिटेंट इनफ टू बी योर सर्विस प्रोवाइडर फाइनेंशियल साउंडनेस लाइक आई सेट उनकी बैलेंस शीट कैसी है वॉट इज द प्रोफिटेबिलिटी विल दे बी एबल टू डू द फंक्शन और परफॉर्म द फंक्शन दैट दे आर सपोज टू ability to service commitments are they actually uh, you know performing uh, as per their commitments theek hai business reputation kya hai culture compliance complaints theek hai culture to ab aaj ki date mein bahut zyada important ho gaya hai to look at the culture in which the organization is working then cyber security risks when it comes to data or it services cyber security ka ek bahut bada risk hota hai anywhere right we all know about ransomware we all know about cyber attacks so these are the kind of risk associated especially when you are outsourcing your it services okay 
external factors like political economic social legal like i just explained okay so these are certain aspects that are to be considered while due diligence theek hai then a legally binding agreement hona chahiye between the re regulated entities that is banks and the service provider so there should be a legal agreement jisme sare terms and conditions mentioned hone chahiye and these terms and conditions are supposed to be carefully defined and carefully vetted by the legal team of the regulated entities now rbi itna focus kyu kar rahe hai regulated entities pe and is pe because sabse pehle to yes rbi is the regulator but at the same time if because of any outsourcing activity what if it impacts the bank we all know the importance of a banking sector or a banking company banks ki kya importance hum sabko pata hai If a bank fails, it will it can have a ripple effect in the economy. हम सबका पैसा जो बैंक में लगा हुआ है, we have deposits from a bank. So these all you know certain banks that is how banks are associated with the economy या economy से connected है and they are at the center of the economy, right? बहुत सारा पैसा होता है banks के पास. That is why RBI is focusing on regulated entities again and again and again. Okay. Now, what are the aspects to be considered in the agreement? इससे पहले हमने पढ़ा था due diligence करते हुए कौन सा aspects uh, that are supposed to be considered? Now, what are the aspects that are supposed to be considered in agreement? तो ये बहुत basic है एक बारी बस read कर लीजिए details of the activity agreement में ये सब mention होना चाहिए type of material adverse events material material means important adverse events what if a disaster takes place and all your data is gone or what if a cyber attack takes place and all your data is gone theek hai ya koi aapne software management company rakhi hui hai which keeps managing or monitoring the software that your entire organization is having and sub let's suppose ek ransomware attack ho gaya on the software or any virus attack on the software and pura software ud gaya pura data ud gaya so what if any material adverse events take place वो भी सब मेंशन होना चाहिए इन द अग्रीमेंट हु विल टेक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ दैट व्हाट विल बी द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ दैट ऑल दीज आर सपोज टू बी केप्ट इन माइंड वाइल कंसिडरिंग द अग्रीमेंट ओके स्टोरेज ऑफ डेटा टाइप ऑफ डेटा इंफॉर्मेशन दैट दे आर कमिटेड टू शेयर अब ये भी नीड बेसिस पे होता है नीड बेसिस पे ऑन नीड बेसिस ओनली नॉट ऑल डेटा इज शेयर ऑन नीड बेसिस ओनली इस सॉफ्टवेयर के लिए कितना डेटा इंपॉर्टेंट है बस उतना ही आपको मिलेगा सो ऑन नीड बेसिस ओनली नॉट अ ब्लैंकेट अप्रूवल टू द एंटायर डेटा अब आ जाते हैं रिस्क मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क पे तो एक रिस्क मैनेजमेंट फ्रेमवर्क हर रेगुलेटेड एंटिटी को मेंटेन करना है दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट वी ऑल नो नाउ अब इसमें क्या क्या होना चाहिए द प्रोसेस रिस्पॉन्सिबल द प्रोसेस एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज for identification measurement mitigation management and reporting of risks like i said kitne sare risk ho sakte hain that are associated with an outsourcing activity especially when it comes to it services jab it services ki baat hoti hai there are a lot of risks associated with that so ek risk management framework mein bahut sari cheeze aati hain for example how can you manage the risk in case of any adverse happening और अगर कोई ऐसा रिस्क होता है और ऐसा एक्सीडेंट हो जाता है हाउ कैन यू मिटिगेट दैट सो आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ रिस्क वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ वेरियस रिस्क दैट माइट कम इन फ्यूचर एंड मिटिगेशन ऑफ रिस्क तो ये सब रिपोर्ट करने होते हैं इन द फ्रेमवर्क फ्रेमवर्क में ऑल दीज पॉइंट आर सपोज टू बी इंक्लूडेड नाउ लाइक आई सेट इट शुड बी इन नीड टू नो बेसिस तो एक्सेस टू डेटा फ्रॉम द आर ई टू दर्ड प्रोवाइडर और द सर्विस प्रोवाइडर इज ऑन नीड टू नो बेसिस इफ यू need to know actually need to know the data then only you will get to know the data otherwise ek blanket approval nahi milega aapko further agar koi multiple service provider relationships hai which means if an organization an re is dealing with many service providers and not just a single service provider let's suppose do teen software liye hue hain and there are two three companies with which they are uh, you know having contracts with or agreements with when it comes to maintaining those services so in case two or more service providers say two or more service providers say contracts hain relationships hain then collaborative delivery of end to end solution can take place and in even in that case the re remains responsible for understanding and monitoring of the control environment which means anything that happens in such a situation ki agar re ka data aur uh, jo unke system hai aur unka software hai uska data किस किस को कितना कितना एक्सेस मिलेगा दैट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज ऑन द आर ई सो आर ई इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ एवरीथिंग दैट इज गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन वेरियस सर्विस प्रोवाइडर इन केस ऑफ मल्टीपल सर्विस प्रोवाइडर रिलेशनशिप्स ओके 
नाउ कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रिस्क ओके कॉन्सेंट्रेशन रिस्क क्या होता है आउटसोर्सिंग बाय मल्टीपल आउटसोर्सिंग टू द सेम सर्विस प्रोवाइडर Yes, and all the cons. Okay, so when only one service provider is providing services to various other entities or regulated entities, so let's say, कभी कभी क्या होता है? One service provider gives services to various competitors. अब उस cases में जो risks involved हो सकते हैं, उनको कहते हैं concentration risks. Concentration risk. So the entire functioning of a lot of regulated entities or a lot of companies are concentrated on that one service provider. so when there is concentration of activities on one service provider that can lead to certain risks jisko hum kehte hain concentration risks now res that are regulated entities shall effectively assess what will be the impact of such risk what will be the impact of concentration risk which is posed by multiple outsourcing to the same service provider in case that happens what will be the concentration risk this has to be assessed by the regulated entities okay now business continuity plan or disaster recovery plan ab agar koi aap agreement kar rahe hain you have to map or have a plan what will uh, in case something adverse happens ya koi disruption ho jati hai right what will be the plan so that is supposed to be maintained by the re that is regulated entity so regulated entity is supposed to have a plan what will happen in case there is uh, you know any disruption to the continuity of the service provider agar kuch aisa ho gaya ki service provider discontinue ho gaya ya dissolve ho gaya ya liquidate ho gaya or they cannot provide you the service any more to so discontinuity ya unki continuity pe impact pad gaya impact adverse impact on the continuity of the service provider in such case mein kya hoga with the re or with the activity with the regulated entity ki activity pe kya effect aayega वो प्लान करना जरूरी है राइट इज देर एनी ऑल्टरनेट अवेलेबल टू द रेगुलेटेड एंटिटी सो एनी बैकअप एक्टिविटी बैक इन द हाउस इन केस ऑफ इमरजेंसी अच्छा सो दिस मीन्स कि इन केस एनी कोई एडवर्स इंपैक्ट होता है या कोई डिजास्टर हो जाता है इफ देर इज एनी डिजास्टर वॉट विल बी द डिजास्टर रिकवरी प्लान हाउ विल यू ब्रिंग बैक द डेटा और हाउ विल यू ब्रिंग बैक द इंटायर एक्टिविटी दैट वॉज बींग परफॉर्म बाय द थर्ड पार्टी टू योर हाउस और टू योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so outsourced activity back in house in emergency bringing the outsourced activity back in house in house ka matlab apne paas wapas in house in case of an emergency what will be the cost of that what will be the time of that theek hai so agar koi adverse impact hota hai kisi bhi outsourcing act, outsourced activity pe there should be a plan a contingent plan okay a contingency plan Now, monitoring and control of outsourced activity. So, regular audits होनी चाहिए. Regular audits होनी चाहिए by the RE. Regular audits. So, the RE, that is the regulated entity, should have should have regular audits in place uh, for the outsourcing activity or on the service provider, right? So, the RE shall conduct regular audits of service provider, including if they have any subcontractors, right? With regard to the activity that is outsourced, so regular audits होनी चाहिए जो करेंगी perform uh, performance को monitor करेंगी at the same time uptime of the system and resources, service availability and adherence to certain acts and agreement. Okay, so regular audit होनी चाहिए monitoring होना चाहिए of the outsourced activity. Are they being performed in the way they are supposed to be performed? So monitoring and reporting of that process of audit or any monitoring activity that is being taken place now agar koi aise services hai now in case that happens that certain uh, regulated entities are pro, uh, getting their service from one service provider only so let's say in a area there is only one service provider that is working and a few regulated entities are taking business or giving contracts to the same service provider to the same service provider in that case a group audit can also take place ya share audit shared audit shared audit means sab apna apna ek ek auditor bhej sakte hain and ek share audit ho sakti hai of the outsourced activity okay now cross border outsourcing bhi hoti hai in case the outsourced company is working in a jurisdiction that is not your own jurisdiction okay so in this case cross border outsourcing ab is case mein kya hota hai since it is not the same area or local area in which your company is so there are a lot of uh different rules and regulations 
फॉलोड बाय दैट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर और दैट कंपनी तो उनकी गवर्नमेंट की पॉलिसीज अलग होंगी जो कि शिफ्ट होती रहती होंगी द आर ई दैट इज द रेगुलेटेड कंपनी रेगुलेटेड एंटिटी इज सपोज टू मॉनिटर इज सपोज टू मॉनिटर द गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज ऑफ द कंट्री ऑफ द जुरिस्टिक्शन इन विच दैट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर इज ऑपरेटिंग ओके नाउ दीज आर सर्टन एक्टिविटीज और एक्टिविटीज ऑफ सर्विसेस दैट कैन नॉट बी आउटसोर्स ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एग्जाम में जरूर आ सकता है कि कौन कौन सी ऐसी एक्टिविटीज हैं जो आउटसोर्स नहीं हो सकती सो लेट्स जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट देम लेट्स जस्ट रीड देम वंस ये लर्न नहीं करना है जस्ट गो थ्रू देम जस्ट रीड देम वंस ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंटरनेट बैंकिंग सर्विसेस इंटरनेट सर्विस प्रोवाइड हो रही है आपको इंटरनेट बैंकिंग सर्विस प्रोवाइड हो रही है दैट कैन नॉट बी आउटसोर्स एस एम एस गेट वे एस एम एस गेट वे इज वेन यू प्रोवाइड बल्क एस एम एस सर्विसेस ठीक है तो अगर बल्क में एस एम एस जाते हैं जैसे आपको बैंक से मैसेजेस आते हैं दैट सर्विस कैन नॉट बी आउटसोर्स आई टी हार्डवेयर प्रोक्योरमेंट अगर कोई आप आई टी हार्डवेयर प्रोक्योर कर रहे हो दैट कैन नॉट बी आउटसोर्स ओके सिमिलरली मेंटेनेंस सर्विसेस Including security patches or bug fixes of IT infra licensed products provided by original equipment manufacturer. अगर original equipment manufacturer आपको कोई service दे रहा है that cannot be outsourced. Now, platforms provided by entities like routers, Bloomberg, Swift, etc. Now these are एक तो ये I think बाहर की है if I'm not wrong and at the same time other institutes also nsc bsc agar they are providing you any financial service then these also cannot be outsourced services obtained by re as a sub member of the centralized payment system from another re so if an re is getting service from another re which is working under or getting service under the centralized payment system cps system tab bhi outsource nahi ho sakti apart from that business correspondence service cannot be outsourced Now vendors or entities जिनको आप as a service provider नहीं ले सकते the regulated entity cannot outsource activities from uh, to these vendors or service providers or entities. So for example, this includes services of fintech firms for data retrieval, data validation, verification services such as bank statement analysis, GST return analysis. तो जो companies ये सब provide कर रही हैं these cannot be outsourced. Other than that, payment system operators and PCs business correspondence so vendors providing business services business correspondence just read them once ya aap yaad to nahi kar rakh sakte but just go through them once okay now let's come to the questions the first question is in the form of a paragraph which is generally how questions in your exam are going to be in phase 2 so in phase 2 you will get a paragraph you will have to identify ki ye paragraph kahan se aaya hai and what is the paragraph talking about in this case you have to identify what are the master directions talking about so regulated entities have been extensively leveraging information technology it and it enabled services to support their businesses models products and services offered to their customers ab yahi se hi itna pad ke hi aapko samajh aana jana chahiye what is this talking about this is talking about outsourcing of it services and thus it is talking about master directions that are brought out by rbi when it comes to outsourcing of it services which of the following is or are not allowed to be third party service provider for the purpose of this master direction vendors providing business services this is correct vendors providing business services such as business correspondence they are not allowed payment system operators authorized by rbi this is also correct they are not allowed for outsourcing of it services theek hai cloud service provider they are allowed agar aap kisi se cloud service le rahe hain this activity can be outsourced so the correct answer here is not allowed three only oh sorry first and 1 and 2 c okay 1 and 2 are not allowed which of the following is are not considered under outsourcing of it services isme se kaun sa nahi consider hota as outsourcing of it services information system audit correct procurement of it hardware and applications correct sms gateways this is also correct bulk sms is jo jate hain so all of these here are correct based on the above master directions which of the following statement is are incorrect due diligence Shall be taken into consideration while qualitative, quantitative, financial. This is correct. Due diligence में कौन-कौन से factors होते हैं? These are various factors involved while due diligence. While considering aspects, past experience and demonstrated competence are to be taken play are to be taken into consideration while due diligence. I will 
make correction in this. So this is also talking about due diligence. So past experience is supposed to be taken into consideration while doing due diligence along with that demonstrated competence of the organization. Is it competent enough? Financial soundness is to be taken into consideration and ability to service commitment. All of these are taken into consideration while doing due diligence. This is also a correct statement. So all of these here are correct. Okay, so here it is asking about correct and not incorrect because all of these here are correct. Okay, all of the above. Right, so this was the last question of the day. Uh, jo guidelines hai, you just have to get a broad idea about these guidelines. Kuch bhi yaad nahi rakhna hai isme, right? Because they are very detail oriented and they are supposed to be followed by a regulated entity. So we just have to have a broad outstanding of these and just know kon kon si services ho sakti hai, kon kon si nahi ho sakti. Okay, I hope you like the session. Thank you.